Evening and welcome to uh, tonight's Q&A session on nearly the young, longest, not youngest, longest day of the year. Um, so we, um, this is part of the Farming for Nature Ask the Farmer Q&A sessions. My name is Bridget Barry and I coordinate Farming for Nature. Uh, Farming for Nature was set up to encourage and inspire farmers that farm or wish to farm more for nature. And one of the ways we do this is we find exemplary farmers each year through our National Farming for Nature Ambassador Awards. This Q&A session is a great way to hear from these ambassadors and find out their kind of practical actions on their farm for nature, what's worked and also what hasn't worked. So I'll kickstart the event and ask the guest speaker a few questions. And if you have any questions for the speaker, please write them into your chat, uh, chat box at the on the black banner at the bottom. And I'll facilitate answering, uh, sorry, facilitate these questions in due course. So on to tonight's session, we're delighted to welcome Wexford farmer Nicholas Redmond, uh, who, is, who is joining us. Nicholas runs a mixed stock organic farm in North County Wexford on uh, 52 acres split between two different areas. Nicholas, welcome and thanks for joining us tonight. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to speak. Um, Nicholas, so you have uh, 52 acres with a number of different livestock on it. Can you describe your farm and your farming system for us? That's a that's a big question, isn't it? Describe my farming system. Well, the farm just describe the farm, not my farming system. Uh, the farm is split in two lots. The home farm is about forty five acres. There'd be fifteen acres of that under forestry. Then the other plot is seven acres of which three acres are uh, old forest old oak forest and four acres of um, traditional hay meadows mm -hmm. and just a, a brief overview in a couple of sentences what what is your farming system uh, what is my farming system to as little so as possible you, which uh, <laughs> which animal which livestock do you have um, uh, yeah okay Sorry, uh, I have sheep, so we run about 30 head of sheep plus lambs. Then I have about, well, I only have three dexter cows, a bull and followers with them. And then we have uh, three donkeys and a couple of alpacas, chickens, guinea fowl, turkeys and a duck. Great. Just one dogs, dog. <laughs> dogs and cats. Yeah, I want to get some more. Fox, yeah. Mr. Foxy has been oh, yeah. uh, busy at work. Okay, fair enough. And can you tell me about your own journey into the into running this farm? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, I'm originally I was originally trained as a chemist, like industrial chemistry, and as circumstances had it, I came back to the farm and then took over the farm about about 30 years ago at that time we had a bit of dairy um i wasn't into the dairy so we kind of quit that after a while and and basically what i would have been doing here was a relentless planting of trees and hedges through the years mm -hmm. Fair and enough. that would include uh, two commercial two commercial plots of forestry. We have one six acre main oak main species, and that's that's thriving. I'm uh, it was probably the best thing I ever done actually. Mm -hmm. I have to say, for wildlife, it's amazing. And then there was, along with that original of six acres, there would have been another three acres of ash. And then uh, about fifteen years ago, then I would have planted more ash. Unfortunately, ash died back and we're sort of trying to remedy that now at the minute. So mm -hmm. we've felled all the ash and it will be a native woodland scheme going forward, which I would have done originally, but it wasn't available at the time. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we just start kind of at the beginning with kind of your livestock and stuff, your, you practice rotational grazing. Perhaps you can just tell us how this works and, and why you chose the system or for your for your space. 
I, I um, basically my philosophy: do the easiest way possible. Yeah. So basically, I just wrote. I don't do any strip grazing, anything like that. It's just the existing fields. There'd be a baby. One, two, two, three, four, five, six main fields here. Yeah, and the stock would be rotated through that. Um the sheep and then the cows normally i leave the cows across in more or less one section they'd have two fields and i rotate the sheep through another two fields and the other two fields then are the uh, would be hay meadows yeah mm -hmm. and you've chosen dexters um why is that or i just uh like the look of them they're hardy they're irish they're small, which for, for the footprint, you know, that they don't mark very much. Uh, mm. You don't have to do much with them. They, they look after themselves. They're quite, um, they're quite friendly, but they're quite um, feral as well. You'd notice okay. that when they have the, the, the calves, they ha the calf will hide all day in the hedge and you won't be able to find them. Mm. And then they just turn up sometime. You, you often go out and think the calf's gone missing, you know, Interesting. which is funny, like deer. Yeah, 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 yeah. A kind of protective thing. And, and they're easy, thing. you know, they're, they're easy going. I have a bull as well, of course, yeah. Yeah. And he's very friendly. And you, do you keep your cattle out 12 months of the year? Sorry? Do you no. keep them out 12 months? No, no we've heavy, we're heavy. This is Macamoreland, it's heavy clay. It's not yeah. possible. You, you might, but I don't like it. You will mark the ground. And, yeah. Uh, I get enough hay in to keep them the, the winter. And that's all I feed them. I only feed them hay and nothing else. Hay and grass, full stop. And then how does the kind of the sheep and the donkeys and everything, do they do they graze together? Is it all separate? How does it kind of work? And so uh, it depends on, the, depends on what's happening. Sometimes, the, like for instance, now I have the cows across the river. So but there's a lot they have in graze. So we send the sheep in with them. Um, donkeys, donkeys. I'm not really grazing. I use them to clear up places. That's more their function here. Mm. They're extremely good in eating briars. They eat furs. They eat nettles. They eat ducks. They eat everything actually. Mm -hmm. So they're the, the perfect lawnmowers. <laughs> and um, very good. Any sort of scrub, any type of. If well, of course you can't let them at trees because that they'll they'll do them as well. Okay. But I use them a lot, like in, you know, sort of overgrown spots that I want to clear up and I don't want to go streaming. They'll mm -hmm. do the job for free and a better job as well. Yeah, There's nothing yeah. to clear up either. Yeah. 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 So and they, they don't leave much of a mark on the No, they, they're actually, they're, they're probably just uh, interesting. They seem to have extremely soft feet. They're actually um, less pressure than the cattle in that. Mm. Even though they're quite big animals, they must be the hoof shape, I think. Okay. Yeah. And you said you had uh, four acres of traditional meadow. What's how do you manage that, or what does that kind of what's your grazing what's your grazing method or system regime for there? Or well, I, I'll I'll explain how that came. You see that this is the home farm. This would have been our family farm for hundreds of years. And my father then was a national school teacher, principal in Courtown, River Chapel. And my mother worked there as well. And they bought, bought uh, a place in Ardemine. And then at one point, then they brought this small plot of forest and uh, four acres field is in two plots, one one acre, one three acre plot. And my dad then, he liked, well, he was out of a farming family, so he liked to do a bit of farming. And he was, uh, so he made hay on that every year and then sold it to the neighbours. Mm -hmm. And then I... When I took over, well, I took over, I just continued that. And then a few years ago, we, we were seeing a lot of uh, flowers in it and we were wondering, could we do anything with that? And then we made contact with uh, Sandra Coppola, um, wildflowers.ie. Okay. So he came down and had a look and said, yeah, I'll take that. And there was a lot of... Um, naturally occurring yellow rattling and a lot of naturally occurring clover which he found very useful for his seed company and we're harvesting there ever since so the regime we'd use is this is where also the donkeys 
come in. They're very good for uh, pre-grazing your flower meadow because they don't pull stuff, they clip. Okay. And uh, on Sandra's advice, he said you should clip it quite late, you know, maybe into nearly February, but it needs to be short before the, the new season begins. So we'd kind of, often I'd put them in in February, maybe to the end of February, then we close it. Um, we don't and take any seed so first of all what happens he'll come and take the seed and uh, what he'd have for that is a small mini combine or a quad with a brush uh, machine behind it with bags and it just kind of whisks it in yeah and normally we would do that he would do that end of july earliest depending on the weather mm -hmm. you have to let the seeds ripen so he'd do that, he'd take his harvest, and then I get my local contractor and he comes in and cuts it. I turn the hay, make the bales, and then they're just, the circle begins again, yeah. Do you, do you keep the hay for yourself or do you sell Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All of it, yeah. Yeah, great. So between February and July, it's just left be the, the field. It's not touched at all. Not touch whatsoever. Yeah, and presumably no inputs and nothing. There's like zero, zero inputs. I haven't put an input in. Well, I might have, you know, under one of the schemes, I might have done lime on it at one stage, but that's a long time ago. But basically zero inputs on any of the land, actually. And do you find the plants change each year? Or are they kind of pretty? No, I now? think once they once you get an established ecosystem there they seem to be pretty much the same sometimes you get more of one and less of the other but yeah um this year is a very good rattle year okay actually yeah interesting and you don't like you've kind of you're that you don't have any problems with like nettles or docks or any of that on that particular not pasture. on the not not on the hay meadows no docks yeah docks on that one there's no docks uh but there would be some docks. You have to dig them out or at least take the seed heads out mm -hmm. so they don't reseed. Yeah. 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 That was Sandra's recommend. Just cut them when they're coming to seed and get rid of them. Okay. Just collect them and just mm. get rid of them. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, isn't it one year of seeding is seven years of weeding or something? Exactly. It? Yeah. Uh, Especially on docks. They're, yeah. uh, they like to keep going. They're tenacious. So, yeah. So you have, um, did you say 18 acres of broadleaf, is it? uh there would be yeah around yeah yes um some so, of it's old old uh the, the plot in Lard of mine that's in an old estate part of an old estate so okay, that would be so, mature oak main species but lots of other things as well so do you do any management with the old planting and what's the management for the new plantation um the old planting not to date there is a there is a government scheme, but unfortunately, like in a lot of these schemes, it's a bit small. You have to do a what do you call it? You know, an environmental assessment, and that costs. And my forestry advisor said it'd be hardly worth the bother of doing it, like because that would cost so much, it'd use up the grant anyway. Okay, yeah. fair enough. And then, uh, so that's just here, left be. Do you graze it uh, underneath it? Do you do agroforestry or anything? No, 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 no. Yeah. And the uh, I don't know if I'd be even allowed to do agroforestry under it. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Def definitely not in the, in the definitely not in the commercial parts anyway. Okay. And the, unless, it, unless it was an agroforestry plantation, yeah. Plantation, yeah, exactly, yeah. specifically. So. When did you plant that and what's your management around the around the forestry? The forestry, uh, the forestry was planted approximately the first plot 30 years ago. That would be the six acres oak main species and uh, the three acres of ash. And then the rest were planted 15 years ago, but that's all ash species plus some other stuff. And so you've had to take them all out. And can they you do are, anything... Can you do anything with the wood of the ash dieback or? Oh yeah, yeah, you can burn it. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, which, see. which, which the harvester—that's his payment. That was his payment for cutting it. Okay, take it away and have it as timber. Yeah, yeah. it wouldn't have been size enough for for wood and stuff, if you know what I mean, because they're only thirty years old. I mean, yeah. they may be 
but that size maybe max. So it looked pretty. It looked pretty rough, actually. Yeah, I can imagine. It's. it's um, I mean, it's obviously very heartbreaking for people when. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you can see the life is coming again. Yeah. It's, yeah, nature resilient. Yeah, yeah. And we have a lot of. Um, we we'll have a lot of cherry and there's a lot of other stuff still there, you know. And, and as I said, we we'll have the native woodland scheme, so that's great. No. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So you get started on that. Yeah. So the other the other plot, the uh, the oak one, we would be on uh, undergoing a thinning process at the minute. Mm -hmm. And sorry, how and old I, is the oak plantation? Or? 30. That's, that's the oldest. 30. That's oh, all okay. the oldest plantations are 30. Okay. okay. Other than the one in Ardemine, that is that's that's a an estate, mm -hmm. old piece in the old estate. And I get a guy, uh, Connor Murphy's his name, and he um, does it in a kind of a chainsaw. It's not with commercial machinery, and he has a small rig to take out the stuff. Although I've bought some myself now, so I want to haul out myself with my little Massey twenty. Fair enough. Good. Mm -hmm. So basically, what he do is he he comes and then we decide which trees are left and then we he tins appropriately. Mm -hmm. But I mostly follow his um, instructions unless there's special trees. Some some are not to go, you know. Regardless, yeah. So your vision when you started out, well, not when, it, it, your vision has become kind of that your place becomes a nature sanctuary or reserve. Um, how's, how's, how has it changed or what plants or animals have you seen responding to your type of farming? Um, I would say it was always, it was always my dream for the place. I, mm. uh, I'm not the person to, to talk about commercial. I'm, I'm not commercial, never was. I, I'm, I'm run by my own ethics and everyone has their own ethics and mine. I like to work with nature and uh, make uh, the place beautiful, if I could put it in simple words. Mm. Yeah. So nice life. to live. Yeah, make a real nice place where you can really enjoy your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what um what animals or plants have you seen responding to how you farm, like in the in your thirty years that you've been there? Um, uh, quite amazing, actually. Uh, we have, well, we have an enormous amount of bird life. Yeah, but birds are the ones you see. Yeah. Mm. So, or here. And we get an, an amazing dawn chorus here. Well, now we're up to midsummer. You can see it's starting to go silent again. Um, mm -hmm. We'd have uh, enormous amounts of blackbirds and thrushes. Um, unfortunately, we have a lot of berry bushes and they, as I they said, there's no, there's no free lunches with those guys. Yeah, they're finished the concerts. Now it's time to feast. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, ne we have cherries, but you never get a look at them. Yeah. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Um, I have a lot of wild cherries and they have those. So one of my things in planting was to plant a lot of um, fruit bearing trees like mm. cherries. Uh, I have a lot. Well, not that many. I have uh, bird cherries. We would have a lot of hazelnuts. We have a lot of uh, crab apples. Mm. And then hawthorns, you know, the usual other mixed species but i like the cherries are really nice in the wood uh, and bird life then would be what what what's amazing okay like from an amazing point of view we have sparrow hawks that nest every year here and have nested for quite a few years and they bring out a big hatch of sparrow hawks every year and that's really nice to see and watch mm. yeah um two years ago we had our first buzzards and they successfully reared one and uh, they were there last year as well, but I wasn't paying attention to them so much. I don't know what the story was with them. And this year they're not here, but buzzards move their nest around. That's quite normal. They like to move around their territory, depending on what they're at. Um, last year we had the first long eared owls. And they, they, they have, there's a chick out at the moment. You hear it at night. Right. Maybe one, maybe more. Mm. You know, you hear they have this squeaky gate sound. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. They're really easy to hear. Um, we have some woodpeckers. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've nested yet, but they're resident. Mm. 
uh, we would have J boards. You know, these are boards that wouldn't have been here. I mean, mm -hmm. blackboards that they'd be quite normal. Wrens, robins, donucks. Uh, we have a lot of chaffinches, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of tits of all types and descriptions. We have quite a few uh, warblers, actually. Mm -hmm. Sort of willow warblers, some type like that. Now I'm not, but they're on that, they're that type of species because I planted a lot of willow in the hedges here at times. Great. And do you do, um, do you do surveys or anything on your land? So um, kind of keeping a note of what's going on? God, you can't do everything, can you? No, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone else wants to do a survey, by all means. <laughs> I have a guy who's going to come and do a bat survey, I hope. Great. We did have a survey by Paul Green from the Royal Botanical Society. And he done a survey of the plot, the hay meadow down in Ardamine. And there would be at least 50 different species in that. And some quite unusual stuff. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we have Adder, Adder's Tongue Fern, which is, of course, he's a bit of a genius. He comes in the field, he spots stuff half a mile away. Because mm -hmm. um, there are only little, little things about this size. And then we have upright brome, which is a unusual grass, not uncommon, but not so common. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, this year we found, well, last year we found orchids there as well. Right. Which I never knew were there, but they, I had the Wexford naturists, naturalists. Sorry. I, was just saying, <laughs> I didn't want to say I was I waiting, I always, I was waiting I always, for the rest of that sentence. I, was, I, I, was, I, I make that mistake sometimes. Um, know, they yeah. were out and they spotted the, the orchids. Yeah. So right. that's great. That's yeah. a really good sign anyway. And with your Dexter, do you sell direct to restaurants or is it going to kind of mainstream? Or? Uh, no, we keep for ourselves. We sell the heifers. Oh, okay. Okay, grand. Fair enough. Um, I was just going to ask us kind of, do you feel that the taste might be different because of the, the taste is exceptional. The taste is exceptional. Yeah. yeah. Are you uh, allowed to make us all drool now? Of the I know, you know, like the, the, the super, they've got a super marbling in the, in the, in, in the flesh, in yeah. the meat, like which when you grill it is like out of this world. Yeah. Mm. It's kind of crispy and meaty at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> We've got the barbecue going for us all. I have, but yeah. it's prawn, it's prawns tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, and is there anything else that you've done for nature? Like, have you got ponds? Have you got watercourses going through your land, or um, have you got uh, have you got any kind of wetlands in in your farm? We we have a, a small river stream going through the farm. Mm. Um. There would be, we have sticklebacks in that. I have seen a kingfisher on it one year. Mm -hmm. There is king, you see that, that, that stream or river connects to a SAC, mm -hmm. a slob um, in Old Bond, you know, so there'll be a lot. We have otters. Okay. They come up the river because I found one dead on the road one day. Mm -hmm. um, we would have um, ponds. Yeah, we have, you, you know, um, Macamore land is very heavy clay. So traditionally here they dug a lot of ponds either to get marl to build houses mm -hmm. or I do believe they actually used to burn it and make fertilizer, but don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. So traditionally Macamore there'd be nearly a pond in every field. That's not the case anymore. Um, yeah, we've got several ponds here and I'm working on one at the minute and there's another one I want to. I just opened it up. It was completely um, overgrown with uh, willows. So I cut that back and then just let it come itself. Mm -hmm. And there's another one I want to attack soon. And on that, do you have any problems with invasive species where you are? Or... Like? Uh, just because you're on the waterways, I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. not weed or, you know. No, there's nothing on the waterway anyway. Or no. it's, only a, or... it's, a, it's quite a short stream, so it's quite local. It's okay. not, to, yeah. Yeah, it's sure. only maybe, I think it's only maybe a couple of miles long, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the... And we would have frogs quite a lot. Yeah. And if and, anyone has... And any, 
Oh yeah, good. If anyone has any questions for Nicholas, please put them in the put them in the chat box there. Um, the just before I kind of move on to the chat box is uh, where would you kind of start with advising a farmer if they want to like if they want to start thinking about incorporating nature more into their farm where would you kind of what advice would you give a farmer and where to start um yeah where would you start i would say kind of feel into it don't be in a rush and kind of see what suits your situation there's always little spots that you can turn for nature you know but it's very individual to each farm mm. and depends really what where you want to go with the farm yeah I mean, I've taken, for instance, like with my forestry, I've taken out commercial grassland, you know, but that was my choice. That wouldn't be everyone's choice. Mm -hmm. But often farms have little corners. Um, I, what I've done as well, I have a lot of hedgerows, new ones. Some of that um, with the glass scheme. Um, I would have um, wildlife corridors, you know, sort of like a well, say a 10 meter margin of trees along the edges of fields and intend to increase that this year as well. Mm -hmm. Very good. And when you were kind of starting out, where or do you have any advice where farmers can go for advice and support? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, you need to just read up a bit. I would say the Farming for Nature people would be good. Um, a lot of the organic guys would be farming for nature minded anyway, not all, you know, I mean, some stay quite commercial, but do it organically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Um, uh, who else would there be? I'll go and look around, see mm -hmm. what other people are doing. That's probably the easiest. I always say if you go to a place, you should come back with at least one good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. <clears throat> I always find as well with when you're visiting other farms and stuff I mean every farm even your neighbor's farm is so different from your own and you know each farm has a different kind of combination of factors to make it that farm that by going on lots of different walks or whether it's a different type of farming system like you say you should be able to come back with something um so Dan McCarthy asks hi Nicholas what a lovely way to tune in with nature I'm wondering how do you survive financially Good question. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not holidaying to New York. We'll put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Do, is your farm uh, financially productive? Are you farming? Uh, yeah, it's somewhat productive. I mean, I'm in the glass scheme. I'm in the organic scheme. That's quite, you know, decent. And I have my sale of sheep. I'd have some cattle sales. Uh, I have seed sales now, of course, and the, mm. the, the hay meadows. Mm -hmm. um so i'm surviving i mean i was reading an article there yesterday that they said the average suckler farm only makes ten thousand a year so i mean i'm up there anyway mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. still having a good lifestyle yeah, and, yeah. and none of the slavery <laughs> yeah yeah you took a left turn in from chemistry anyway and no debt yeah no debts. yeah 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 no it's handy um what it, what kind of one memory stands out for you when you think about farming alongside nature? Um, is there anything that kind of one story or one yeah, memory? Yeah, well, there's out? lots of stories actually. Every every day is a new story. <laughs> I mean, there's wonders you meet every day, but uh, yeah, I'll two because I'll take the first ones to come to mind because that's probably often the best best ones. Mm -hmm. So. Um, one year, and I don't know when it was, quite a few years ago, we had an invasion of uh, painted lady butterflies. And well, a lot of them came to the farm here and then they laid their eggs. And then there was thousands, I mean, thousands of caterpillars. And there were so many caterpillars in a calm evening, you could hear them eating. Mm. And I'll never forget, you could hear the munch, munch, munch. Um, and another really special event was maybe two or three years ago, all the, all the migrating swallows came to the farm, you know, and they collected 
down in one of the lower fields and I was down there and they were all just buzzing around me, thousands of them. Yeah, it was amazing. And are you still getting, um, have you seen swallow numbers decrease on your farm or are they kind of remaining no, stable? No, they've dropped dramatically. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that about what was it about three years ago they crashed three or four years ago they crashed we would have had maybe 10 or 12 pairs we're down to three or four now mm. yeah and I believe that's the same for lots of other people because I was asking people on the walk on the farm walk mm. and they had the same experience and uh, they said it was the same and where do they do they nest in your do you have sheds or yeah yeah there's old uh, cow sheds and stuff like that Mm -hmm. They like to go to the same spot every year, same yeah. nest as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're quite fussy. And on that, what do you do around your farm buildings or around your farmyard for nature? What what kind of how do you leave space? <sighs> Don't do a whole lot. I think yeah. uh, actually a lot of farming for nature is let things be. Don't don't be too tidy and too fussy. That's half the problem. We're trying to do too much, too often. Leave nature do its thing and it'll do its thing yeah you don't mm. really have to be doing massive amounts of work yeah mm. do things now on the farm uh, i have a i have a owl box up because we do have barn owls here in the area yeah because i've seen them um but i haven't had one come in yet and i want to build another box in one of the other sheds because mm. it might be more suitable for them mm. So but they're you definitely, build... you hear them at night, like they're, they're here at night. Yeah. Great. And did you um, build a box? How did you, what's the box look like? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's I think it's from a standard, you know, the one ply board. Oh, you... you get the instructions from, there's a British owl trust and they give you the full plan. It's really easy to build. Yeah. Indoor. They're always indoor. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier to put them indoor because then they won't rot. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you don't need to use as heavy materials. Outdoors, you need to use really good cedar wood and stuff. So I didn't bother with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put up a few years ago loads of bat boxes and bird boxes, but um, I find that the blue tits have them all, both the bat boxes and the bird boxes. But um, how would they get into the bat box? It, well, there's a little kind of gap, but they they're definitely coming in and out of them. <laughs> and uh, so yeah. anyway, bat boxes I haven't yet. Well, we have a lot of bats here. Mm. Well, I, that would be one of my next projects. Yeah, mm -hmm. More bat boxes and maybe a bigger bat sanctuary. Mm -hmm. We have a few ideas. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> and talking of which, what's the kind of the future plan for your farm? Uh, the future plan? Go ahead as we're going, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe... You could say, I mean, a lot of people, ecotourism may be the right way to go. Yeah. Um, especially if you're providing a lot for nature and have a very good aesthetic place. Mm. Yeah. And I would see that as a great potential for people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're not so sure if we want to do that, you know, because that's also certain commitments you have to make and your privacy. Yeah. But some sort of um, educational would be what we'd be thinking. Mm -hmm. mm. fair enough like farm walks or stuff like that Can yeah I... or maybe people coming and doing stuff I don't know mm. um, facilita facilitating people yeah mm -hmm. great um, are you sorry is it just you and your partner currently or do you any people work in the farm I have a couple of woofers French woofers at the moment right and they're great yeah, yeah. Great. you need extra I mean an organic nature farm you need a lot of manpower yeah mm -hmm. we don't use any kind of well i've no kind of um, cutting machinery other than a mowing bar you know self-propelled mm -hmm. there's a lot of weeding and you know we have a lot of gardens as well a lot of berries lots of vegetables like we grow most of our own stuff and is that all for just self-sustainable that's not yeah for yeah sale? we like eating yeah yeah <laughs> we like eating well yeah I yeah yeah, say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well and tasty. And do you have woofers 12 months of the year? No. No. No, we'd only have them, like, I would say summer season. We wouldn't have the accommodation for the winter. It's too cold. Yeah, fair mm. enough. And there's not as much to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then we have a friend who comes and helps us, and he, he'd he be here all the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, maybe three or four days a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kelly Sean says, uh, asks, what do you think about hemp agroforestry and eating less animal products? That's three questions in one, isn't it? Okay, well, what do you think about hemp agroforestry? Hemp, hemp is the way to go, yeah. I mean, I'm surprised, yeah. I mean, it's a amazing plant. Mm. Um, do you grow any of it yourself or? No, not? no, no. Of course, uh, I can see the potential as for fiber and materials. It's the way to go. It's uh, it's it's a no brainer. Yeah, you can produce enormous amounts of biomass, fibers, oil, um, seed. Um, yeah, and it grows well in Ireland. And they did grow it in former times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what do you think about agroforestry? I'm looking at agroforestry. Um, I have a plot in mind. Uh, I'm not, yeah, definitely agroforestry is definitely one way to go. I didn't like, the only thing I didn't like about it is that the, the problem is when you're with the department, you're kind of restricted in the way you do it. And then you have to have certain planting spaces. And I'd actually prefer a more open forest if I was going to plant in a field, you know, for animals mm -hmm. rather than that tight, you know, they're talking. I'm not sure what, but it was quite, quite tight spacing, actually, relatively. Mm -hmm. I was surprised when I looked at it. I still might do it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I might mm -hmm. just go and plant some individual clumps. Yeah, more myself, clusters yeah. than yeah. rows nearly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it would suit this. a lot of people. It's definitely great for the land. That's mm. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember it just as an interesting one. I I studied years ago with a German guy called Eckhart Poblotsky, and he was quite famous uh, for apple tree cultivation. And he was talking about how how um, particularly oak will increase the ground temperature. And that in, in the Middle Ages, um, a lot of the monks, they had a lot of knowledge about that. And they used to be able to raise uh, the, uh, by planting oaks in fields, then they would be able to raise the cultivation area, maybe a couple of hundred meters over mm -hmm. what it would have been. If you understand me and Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. going out of place. Interesting. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Because you, I suppose. So, so oaks, oaks and, and other trees, well, they give cover they bring up nutrients then they drop their leaves so i mean i would say cattle and all they love being under the trees mm. so and sheep yeah shelter shelter everyone likes shelter shelter shade yeah and um less erosion that kind of thing yeah 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 of course yeah. yeah um and then her third i suppose aspect to the question is what do you think about eating less animal products um yeah we we should eat less animal products. Well, I would say it's a, a question of eating better quality animal products rather than anything else. Mm -hmm. Or the ethics on how animals are reared is more, for me, more of a concern. Um, good organic is the way to go. And then there will be automatically less animals because mm -hmm. you can't carry as many anyway. Mm -hmm. So it sort of sorts itself like without getting into and it sorts all a lot of other problems like importing soya from Brazil and all that craziness that's going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the UK, there's a, a group called the Sustainable Food Trust, and they've just brought out a report on how to feed, I suppose in their case, Britain, how to feed Britain ground up. So looking at how to pare back certain kind of which industries they have to pare back and which they have to kind of increase in order to maintain like be able to feed the people but also maintain a certain amount of biodiversity on the land so that there's a balance um mm -hmm. around it so if anyone's interested in that it's on the sustainable food trust um website uh david russell just, asked, wait, what no just saying? i just want to one more thing see on our farm well our philosophy is herbivores eat grass and that's what they get and they're not getting grain Biggest one of the biggest problems, you know, with the meat industry is all these grains and soya that's being produced to feed animals, to feed people. It's not really uh, a very sustainable idea, long term anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you were saying when you have to supplement your cattle, you're supplementing them with the hay that you've. They, that's all they, they only get. Told, yeah. They get grass in the field, they get hay in the winter. They get, of course, a salt lick, and then I'd give them mineral seaweed block as well, maybe. And just out of interest, you have four acres of hay meadows, and that's, do you sell, because do you need four acres of hay meadows to feed oh, yeah. three yeah, yeah. cattle? Oh, no, no, but the, the followers. Oh, the followers as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. So there'd be, there'd be, well, I there's three cows, one bull. There'd be three from last year. Then there'd be three from the year before and maybe three from the year before. So you're talking about right, 12, 12 13. Least, yeah. 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 Okay, fair enough. Okay. No, just in terms of if people are kind of thinking about how much acreage. Yeah, so I to, roughly... How many I'd bales get, you'd need. Yeah, so I'm getting bales. Uh, I'm getting 75 bales altogether, roughly. And I've used most of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Big round bales, obviously not yeah, squares. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I have a massy one six five with forks, which is very handy. And then, do you need straw for bedding, or? Yeah, that has to be bought in. That board bought in, okay. Uh, that's the only thing that's bought in, really. Yeah. Okay, because you don't have any inputs, obviously, in any area of your farm. No. 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 Okay. Uh, David Russell asks, hi Nicholas, love your description of your farm, sounds idyllic. What is the name again of the company that you sell your wildflower seeds to? Um, wildflowers.ie, I'm nearly certain. Uh, it's uh, Sandro Coppola. Okay. And where are they based? And they're, they work... up, they're up in Carlo, up, in, up on the Castlecomer Plateau. Okay. And do you know if, how many farmers they work with in Ireland? Or I don't know, quite a lot. Yeah. He's only working with Irish farmers. Everything is 100% Irish genetic provenance. And he's one of the only, there's only one other, there's a, there's a company in Northern Ireland that do that as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Powers, I was told yesterday, Powers of Waterford also, but I, I believe they're actually working with Sandro together. Okay, okay. so wildflowers.ie. Um, and that, and it's an important issue because there's a lot of wildflowers, you know, seeds and mm. plants, you know, go and scatter some seeds for nature. And but it's good if you keep Irish provenance. Our native flowers are, even if they're the same species, they're genetically different. We've been separated from the continent and Britain for a long time, so they are actually quite different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I suppose if you're working with, like, I mean, the Dexter would be one of the most traditional ancient cows from Ireland. So, you know, it's kind of, they're probably best adapted, their systems are best adapted to the most native flowers as well. So it's a kind of a more healthy system for everything. Yeah, and the rushes as well, which is candy. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Dexters eat the rushes, do they? Mm, they eat rushes, yeah, somewhat, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the donkeys finish the rest. Okay, good on the donkeys. Jesus, there'll be mass. Uh, do you do you loan your donkeys out to people? That's a, I I would say there's definitely business possibilities in that. They they're really good. They do a super job, and they leave nothing. You don't have to do anything. If you electrify everything that you don't want them to touch, they won't touch it. Mm -hmm. So that's why why I like donkeys in particular. Cattle are different. Cattle get hungry, they'll break. Donkeys mm -hmm. will never break the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can basically put them, I have them in the orchard, in one of the orchards, and then you just put an electric fence around each tree. They never touch it. Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter how bare it goes, they won't touch it. Yeah. They're smart as well. Yeah, and then they're very easy managed. They don't bite and they're friendly and yeah. Jesus rode, G Jesus rode one today. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one, no need to say anymore. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like you say, they're kind of very underrated. Yeah. Um, Kelly Sean has asked, what do you think is the future of agriculture in Ireland uh, with climate change? What is the future? Um, I, I would see as Ireland has a great future in farming, but it needs to return to farming for nature and turn away this is only my personal opinion that's everyone has um 
we need to get away from the industrial farm and I think it's a dead end. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of possibilities in farming here, uh, particularly if we think of the wider benefits from farming for nature, the tourism, which is our other big industry and healthy food, you know, I mean, it's common. Uh, uh, all that. I mean, we're, we're ideally placed, really, but we have to kind of grasp the nettle and not be left behind as usual. See, we, I find often Ireland, it's like we're, we're following the continent mm -hmm. in, say, their bad practices. Like we're, we're taking up the practices that they're actually already abandoning and we're mm -hmm. kind of behind in the loop a lot. Like, for instance, uh, just as an example, I lived in Germany 20, 35 years ago. And at that time, uh, I lived in Bavaria, in southern Bavaria. I was a tour guide in Neuschwanstein Castle, by the way. It's really cool. <laughs> uh, get a great view in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the issue there was they were using slurry. Yeah. And there was systematic, they were systematically banning slurry from one area to the other because of groundwater contamination. And I come back here and what are they doing? That's that's what was being promoted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I, I rest my case. I mean, we need to think ahead and not be just copying, yeah. Particularly things which maybe aren't really suitable for our systems here. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. Look at the kind of uh, case problem like being, of course, in that if I you know, because I can see that there's probably farmers on here and you made the investment. You know, and then you have your slats and you have your slurry machines. It's very hard to get over because there's a big investment there. Mm -hmm. But at least if it was managed better and, and really keep it to the growing season, it'd be a lot better. But this, this early and late spreading is, well, I won't say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Roisin Byrne says, Google design by nature and you'll, and you'll get them. Um, sorry, I'm... Don't know what that what? was in relationship. I don't know. Agree, we should be careful to use native seeds. Do you harvest any acorns from old woods? Lovely to see you and hear your stories. Uh, yeah, I did some last year for ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, our woods, the woods wouldn't be particularly old. They'd be, I mean, they may be a couple of hundred year old oaks. They're not like um, mega old oaks, like up in. Cool Latin, for instance. Well, the few that are left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, and Tom McCarthy says, oh, I have to go, but thanks very much. Very interesting. Um, so finally, Nicholas, I mean, if anyone has any questions, please pop them into the chat box now. But um, I suppose, how does it make... Actually, you... just, just on that, there, yeah. non-Sohardy non nursery, they harvest from old oak woods. And okay. they've, they're very good prices. Nice. They do a lot of native woodland stuff. And the other guys would be, they'd be better for commercial amounts. I think the minimum you buy is 50. Okay. Uh, what what was that species. called again, that company? Non so sir? hardy nursery. Okay. They're up in, um, they're in Shalala. Okay. In County Wicklow. And then the other one I would know of would be Future Forest. They're better for small amounts. Got it. Down in West Cork. Yeah. Yeah. Down in Cakel. Yeah. Nice uh, to deal with as well, actually. Both of them are really nice to deal with. Yeah, Great. that's where I'd buy all my stuff. Okay. From either the, those two. Okay. Do they, they obviously do, a, like I know Future Forest do a variety of lots of things. Uh, presumably, uh, what was the other one take uh, as hardy? Not, not so hardy, no. Not so, so yeah, they do a lot, a lot, a big range of native species. Okay. But more in, as I said, you'd be going 50 minimum. Or okay. you can buy bigger, sta bigger ones in singles, you know. Okay. The prices are very good, actually. Great. Uh, David Russell asks, how long does it take you to finish your Dexter cattle? Good question, David. Well, I have uh, I have one now to go and he's he'd be spot on three years. Now, I'd say you could take him earlier. It's just we didn't, you know, we didn't get around to it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a local butcher that you just do? You yeah, have... we, 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 we bring ours to a guy called Christy Bourne in Camolan. He's one of the only small abattoirs left. Mm -hmm. And they do a really nice job. Great. Great. 
We'll be visiting you. Very for good, the very, very good, very good animal welfare there as well. I like them. They're they really care with the animals, you know. Great. Mm. Okay. Um. So, how does it like? I suppose this is kind of a big question for you, like, or it's kind of an obvious one, but how does it make you feel to be working every day alongside nature on your farm? I guess. Makes you a happy person. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciation. Yeah. yeah. If that's maybe the proper word to really appreciate what you have and yeah. the beauty, uh, the beauty that surrounds you and really enjoy it and take time to enjoy it. That's mm -hmm. good. That's what it's like working here. Perfect. Kelly Sean asks, um, do you use clover or green manures? Uh, well, the all the, the swords here have clover in them naturally. Mm -hmm. Lots, uh, a lot of white and a lot of red. Um, in the vegetable garden, yeah, I'd use green manure. Okay, which ones are it just? I'm using, well, I use, I, in the tunnels, I like to use mustard because it's fast and it's kind of would be seen to be good at cleansing out the uh, fungi, you know, unwanted fungi. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of grow it early in the year and then cut it, cut it down. And then outside, I like to use, uh, well, we're using this year, we're using alfalfa and red clover. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I love phacelia for the bees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, nice flower as well. Yeah, yeah. And a bit of borage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. And, uh, and some sunflowers, but I haven't. That's a plot. I, I'm behind on that. Fair enough. Excellent. Uh, and Nicholas, if anyone wants to contact you or is there, are you on social media? Is there any, do you have a website? Is there any, if people have further questions or could they just direct them to me and I can direct them on? Uh, I'm not on social media and I don't have a website. Yeah. But I, I mean, someone wants to phone me, that's okay. Yeah, sure. If people have quest further questions, they can uh, direct them towards me and I can uh, send them on to you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Nicholas. Um, and if think... someone wants to come down, fine, you know, that's, uh, we're quite easy going here. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. As long as I don't have to tend to tend them all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and sometimes we're busy and sometimes not. Depends. Yeah, sure. Fair enough. Um, if unless anyone bring, has... bring a sprong, bring a sprong with you and be, you'll be welcome. Bring a what? Bring a sprong with you and you'll be uh, okay. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Be ready to pull up your sleeves and get going, get yeah. stuck in. Um, unless anyone has any further questions, I'd say we're coming to the end of it there, Nicholas. Um, but listen, thanks a million for, um, you know, sharing your story with us and what you do on your farm. Um, it's great to have a kind of speakers like yourself and doing things for nature on your farm. So um, thank you for that. Um, if you missed any of tonight's session or if you know of anyone that would like to see it, it will be up on our YouTube channel by tomorrow afternoon. So feel free to... Um, share that but or listen to any of our previous ones as well um and then if you have any questions for any of our farmers we have a forum online as well that you can pop your questions up and the fellow farmers can answer it so if you have any kind of questions around practical management of nature on your farm feel free to ask them through our forum that's no problem um our next q a is tuesday two weeks with mona muller who's from county uh, clare um Mona is also a mixed stock uh, organic farmer up there in County Clare. So uh, feel free to register and join us for that. That's Tuesday, two weeks time. Otherwise, thanks again, Nicholas, for, um, for your session tonight. And, uh, and thanks for uh, everyone for joining us. And we'll see you again soon. Okay. Thanks, thanks cool. Nicholas. Take care. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.